Hello, and welcome to another lovely session of Civil Engineering with Tanya J. Laird. I am the aforementioned Tanya J. Laird. In this video, we'll be picking up again with uh, virtual work that we last left off a few course, a few uh, classes ago uh, when we were looking at the deformation of trusses. And in the, in the meantime, we've been looking at the deformation of beams via principles of basic mechanics. In this video, or, or in this lecture, we're going to start looking at uh, calculating beam deflection calculating beam and frame deflection by the application of uh, principles of virtual work and strain energy. So we'll be discussing the principles, we'll be looking at the formulas involved, and working through a simple example or two. Okay, so um, today we're moving on to a new topic. Uh, in terms of the exam, again, the exam is going to cover up through, uh, really up through the lecture last Friday. So we'll go up through beam uh, integration, beam deflections by integration. And today what I want to do is I want to take some of the same topics we've looked at uh, or the same principles we've looked at with uh, beam uh, deflection by integration and apply these, or, or really I'm looking at a way of finding beam de uh, deflection uh, rather than just looking at straight uh, mechanics. I also want to consider, I want to see if, okay, backing up, getting all tongue tied. Maybe I should say it like this. Uh, previously, We've had two things. Well, among other things we've had. We've had a uh, beam deflection. From a pure mechanics point of view. Just looking at stress, strain, etc. And then we've had virtual work, but only in the context of trusses. Again, only in the context of trusses. However, what I would like to do today is to combine these together and see if we can apply the principles of virtual work to the calculation of beam deflection. Beam deflection slash deformation by applying principles of virtual work. So that's my goal today. Is there a way I can apply beam, apply virtual work to the calculation of the deflection of beams and frames? Okay. So as you might recall, let's let's review a bit about the principles of virtual work. Like this marker either. Okay, just getting through all sorts of markers today. Trying to eliminate the uh, fading ones, etc. So, um, looking at the principle of virtual work, we have a couple things. Um, first, we want to look at uh, some, some of the key principles of this, or the key components of this principle. Uh, one is uh, external work. This marker is just bad on many levels, I guess. Uh, one is external work. There we go. That's looking better. So if you have an object or a force, I shouldn't say an object, when you have a force that is moving through a certain distance, it is going to do a certain amount of work. And then you have internal work. Uh, which is, or really another way of looking at that is strain energy. And this can be represented through a variety of ways. This can be represented as a, if you're dealing with a rotational system, it can be, be an M theta. Um, but uh, we're looking, what we're going to be looking at today, it's going to be a, uh, a deformation um, related to flexure. And so, but, but essentially you look at the, what the idea is that you'll have your external work, uh, work equals some, some expression of work equals force times distance. And you'll be balancing this against some uh, internal strain energy. So we'll be combining these together. Additionally, we'll also have a, uh, a real component and a virtual component. Our real system, which we used the subscript uh, P last time, and we'll continue to do so, 
and our virtual assistant, Q. And the key to this is that the virtual system is going to be proportional to the real system. The virtual system, we will consider the virtual system as proportional to the real system. In other words, if you have a, uh, in other words, if you have a beam, for example, that is undergoing deflection, um, if you have a one kip load applied to it um, and measure its deflection, say some sort of delta one, then the deflection that you would get when you had, if you had a, say a 10 kip load, would be a deflection of 10 delta one. Ten times delta one. In other words, 10 times the deflection of the one kip force. So when we're applying virtual work, fundamentally we are assuming the system remains linearly, linearly elastic. We are assuming that all deflections will be proportional to whatever loads, moments, etc. are applied to the system. And when we do this, this allows us to consider both the virtual and the real systems and come up with expressions that can then be used to calculate the, uh, the deflection of systems under real loads. Okay. So um, that's our general form. This is the general form, the general principle of all uh, principle of virtual work type analysis methods. And we're going to look at one today, uh, building on some of the stuff we've looked at previously, uh, looking at the deflection of beams using the principle of virtual work. Alright, so we're going to take a look at how deflections will scale with moments, and we'll consider this. Okay, so the full equation we're going to use, uh, there is a full derivation of this in LEET section 8.6, but I will. Apply, I just want to work with the formula today. So you can see the derivation in LEET uh, section 8.6, if you're curious. But the formula we're going to be working with today is Q delta P is equal to uh, the summation and I moved the summation to the other side over what they had on in their formula, but it's pretty much the same thing. The summation of the integral from x equals 0 to x equals L of mq mp uh, dx over ei, like so. Okay, so what does all this mess mean? Well. Uh, first of all, notice that we have a uh, we have Q's and we have P's. Again, our Q refers to a virtual system, and the, the virtual system again represents a system that we're applying a one kip uh, or one unit load, whatever units you're using. And then um, P represents the real system. This is the beam in, in our case, the beam with the actual real loads on it. So Q represents the virtual load and its reactions. Um, if they, if any of the reactions would under would be undergoing any deflections, then you need to consider those separately from this. But for simple beams, that's not a problem. Uh, then 
we're going to have P. Uh, P again is the, uh, oh actually let me say, I'll just go in order of what's on the, the board here. Delta P. Uh, delta P is going to be the real deflection at some point uh, at the location of the virtual load. And then we have MQ and MP. These are going to be not single, not single values, but functions, specifically functions with respect to X, where X is the uh, position along the beam. So MQ is the uh, moment function of the dummy load or of the virtual load. And what I mean by of the, I mean the moment function produced or caused by the one kip virtual load or one kip foot, depending if you're looking for rotation or deflection. Then MP is the moment function of the real load. And then E and I are just your beam properties your elastic modulus, and your moment of inertia. So, what's all this nonsense mean? Well, it's actually not too bad. Basically, we are going to have a real system and a virtual system. So, let's say we have a, for example, let's say we had a beam. And in this example, we can look at a, well, I'm not going to work all the way through this example, but just a simple one. Let's say we had a, a beam that had, I don't know, a five kips per foot uh, real load on it, a five kips per foot load, and it was, I don't know, uh, 20 feet long. And let's say I wanted to find the deflection at mid-span. How would I do that? Well, this represents my real system. This is the actual beam with the actual loads applied to it. This is P, our real system. Which the real system, which again, uh, Leet and I've also adopted, uh, uses the uh, subscript P for these or the variable P for these. And so um, I'm asking for the deflection at mid-span. So, the way we handle this is that we create a virtual system with a dummy load at the location where the deflection is desired. Uh, with a dummy load or a virtual load, to be consistent, I'll say virtual, a uh, virtual load at the location the deflection is desired. In other words, since in this particular problem, I was asking us, I'd be asking us to find the deflection at mid-span, well, wherever you want to find your deflection, uh, you'll need to apply a virtual load at that location. In other words, for this one, I would apply a one kip dummy load right at the mid span of the beam. So I would have a one kip load at a location 10 feet uh, from the edge or 10 feet from the support or simply at mid span. Okay, so this represents our virtual system. Again, we uh, the key thing again to remember is that if we're looking for deflection at mid-span, I apply my I would apply my uh, one kip virtual load at the mid-span, and if I wanted to find the deflection at all points, I would instead of putting uh, instead of putting the virtual load at one location, I would do it as a function of x 
um, and that way I could find deflection at any point. But for now, keep it. We can look at this relatively simply and just say that uh, we are applying a one kip for point a, a one kip virtual load at the location where we're interested in finding the deflection. So we now have our real system and our virtual system. And then how do we work through this? Well, we say okay. Well, you have a beam like this. Should let me clear. Uh, I'll clear. I'll leave the formula up, but I'll clear everything below that. All right, so what we'll do is we first, so we want to calculate our MQ and our MP. And the way we do that is by looking at our real and our virtual system. So uh, to find MP, uh, that would be the moment function of our real load. Uh, find M as a function of X on the uh, actual, on the real load system, on the real beam. So what I would do is I would find the reactions. I would then, uh, using method of your choice, I would go and find the uh, actual moment function of that beam and do that as a function of x. I'd probably start this at the left-hand side and make that positive to the right. Um, so that's, And then with, that would give us our mp. And again, mp is the moment as a function of x on the real system. Then once I have that, I'll go and get a uh, my MQ, which is my moment function for my virtual system. So next, to find MQ, I will look at my virtual system. Again, I applied a one kip virtual load at the center because that's where I was interested in finding the deflection. So you to find MQ, uh, determine or derive the uh, moment function, again, using an m as a function of x, uh, for the virtual system. And then we will simply, uh, and, and also it is key to keep in mind that we want to use the same coordinate system. That is very important. You absolutely must use the same coordinate system. What I mean by this is that if on this one, on my real system, if I start my x here and make it positive to the right, I better do the exact same thing for this here, uh, for the virtual system. If my real system, because uh, again, mq and mp are going to be functions with respect to x, where x is the position along the beam. And so if I'm doing that, I need to have a consistent um, coordinate system in order to actually apply this integral. Because what we are doing is we are combining, we are simply multiplying these two functions together and then taking the integral of them with respect to x. And so if they don't have the same coordinate system, then my uh, coordinates are going to get all messed up and things are going to get wonky uh, really quickly. And yes, that is the technical term, uh, 1.2 wonky, uh, 1.2 metric wonky units uh, precisely. <laughs> Anyway, uh, math jokes or something. Anyway, so uh, let's see. So we have our, uh, we've, so once you have your MQ and your MP, uh, it's fairly straightforward. Then you put them into your integral, you run through the calculations, and uh, you balance it against Q, which is just going to be a one kip load in our, in the, which would be a one kip virtual load in our case. And we would solve for delta P, which is what we're ultimately after, which is the deflection uh, under, of, this, of the real system under the real loads at the point of application of the virtual load. Okay, so I could work through this uh, all the way, but this one actually has a discontinuity in the middle, and 
Uh, dealing with discontinuities using virtual work is a bit of a tricky system, a bit of a tricky problem. So I'm going to look at uh, a simpler problem right now and save uh, discontinuities for Wednesday. So let's see what this actually looks like. So again, we need to find moment functions for both our real and our virtual load. Add them to the same integral. Integrate them with respect to x from 0 to l. Basically, essentially what we're doing with that integral is we are adding up the internal strain energy at every little delta x uh, at each point along the beam. Integrals, ultimately, think back to calculus. Ultimately, integrals add things together. That's what they do. They're adding up, it's like adding up little trapezoids and such. So with our integral, we are, except with this integral, instead of integrating and adding up areas of like a, a solid revolution or something, we are adding up little bits of energy. For each dx, for each little x uh, differential element along the beam's length, we will be calculate. we'll be finding the energy, the strain energy associated with its deformation, and then adding them together via the integral. And again, you can find the full derivation of that in LEET uh, in the course text. But I do want to work through at least one example today. But I wanted to start with something relatively simple. It doesn't have any discontinuities. Because when you get into discontinuities, it gets very tricky because you have uh, overlapping zones of integration and it can be a bit tricky to figure out how you want to present that so, uh, or how you want to uh, handle that. So I wanted to start with something relatively simple today. Okay, so I'm going to look at um, an example that's in the text, but I think it's good. I think it's a pretty good one, so I'll work through it. So I'm going to work with a simple, not a simply, not a simply supported beam, but a fixed supported beam. Uh, let's consider the end deflection. of a fixed beam. So the end deflection of a, cyst, uh, of a fixed beam, and let's say a fixed beam with a uh, uniform load applied. So um, let's say we have a beam, and so this will be our real system. In other words, what beam, the beam that actually exists and it has a distributed load W on it and some sort of length L and a length from the fixed support of L. And we'll also say that this beam has beam properties, a modulus of elasticity of E and a moment of inertia of I. So uh, I will let, and I, what I'm looking for is I want to find the end deflection, which again here would be how much this thing is going to bend downwards, the vertical distance this thing will bend downwards under this distributed load. So that would be our delta P. P again referring to the real system rather than the virtual system. So we have that. Um, now, so we have our uh, real system. That's defined. And again, what we're looking for is the end deflection. We are looking for delta P. That is how much this thing is going to bend downward, how much it's going to deflect at its extreme far uh, end. So to do this, uh, to find this, we now need to define a virtual system. And again, to def when defining a virtual system, we have to consider what we're looking for. In this problem, we're asked to find the vertical deflection at the end. So that means I'm going to, because I'm looking for a deflection, I'll apply a point load. And later on, we'll see that if we want a rotation, we'll apply like a point couple, a uh, one kip foot, for, for example, a one kip foot uh, couple. We'll see how to do that at some point. But uh, for now, I'm sticking with deflections. But um, so I think they're a little bit easier to understand um, and get the point, get the basic concept across. But um, 
since we're looking for a uh, the deflection at uh, the far end here, I'm going to, and because we're looking for, for deflection, I'm going to be applying a point load. And because I'm looking for the deflection at the end, I'm going to be applying that, uh, that load at the end of the beam. So that means our virtual system will look something like this. So we have our real system and our virtual system. And our virtual system will be the exact same beam, just with all the loads removed, except for our virtual load. So it will still have EI, it'll still be a fixed support, and it will still have length L. However, what is changed is that there is now just one load, a one kip virtual load applied at the right hand side. Okay, so we have our real system. Again, this is the actual beam with its actual with the real actual loads applied to it, and the virtual load or the virtual system with a one kip dummy load. Um, virtual load, dummy load are things that kind of use interchangeably. Um, with a one kip dummy load applied right at the location where our deflection is desired. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to find, um, because if you recall from our formula, which actually I'll go ahead and rewrite down here, our formula again is, probably should have just left that on uh, erased, but that's okay. Uh, Q delta P equals the summation. And the summation is used if you have multiple elements that are being deformed at once. For example, in a framework, uh, summation, the integral of x equals 0 to x equals L of mq mp dx over ei. Okay, so we have our real system, and, or we have our real system and our virtual system defined. So now what we need to do is, uh, well, delta p is, so let, let's look at this equation. Our delta p, that's what we're looking for. That's our final value. Our Q, that's just a one kip virtual load. So that's already known. And again, what we're basically saying here is that this is the external, uh, this is a, an external uh, external work, a work equals force times distance. But again, combining the, the real and virtual systems together. And we're saying the uh, external work will equal an expression for internal uh, stored strain energy. Okay, now E and I, those are trivial. We just have one beam with one moment of inertia and one modulus and, and one elastic modulus. So that's trivial. However, what we do need to spend some effort to get are MQ and MP, which are the uh, which are the uh, functions of moment with respect to x as you move along the beam. And we need to use a, uh, now we can use whatever coordinate system we want, uh, or work energy, uh, energy is a scalar quantity, so it really doesn't matter what coordinate system you use as long as you're consistent. Now, I think for this one, it's going, for this particular system, uh, to avoid calculating a lot of reactions and having uh, to keep the math as simple as possible, with both of them, I'm going to cut them um, a certain distance x from the end, but I'm going to do that uh, measuring x from the right-hand side, like this. So cutting like this, like this. I know usually we tend to put, uh, usually in most of my examples, I tend to put the uh, put the x, uh, zero x coordinate or the origin at the uh, left hand side and to the right positive. However, in this case, it's going to make the math a lot simpler if we put it on the right and make it positive to the right, because then we avoid the reactions and it just becomes a lot easier to calculate our moment function uh, that way. Okay, so uh, let's look, let's cut out, so in the real system, we have cut out, we've cut the beam at some location x. And what I want to do is I want to draw a free body diagram of just this cutout portion. So let's do a real system free body diagram. And let's see what kind of loads are here. Well, uh, so we have our beam, the portion of the beam that we cut out, and that has length x. And then there's going to be a distributed load W across it.
And this is going to have a equivalent point load of Wx at a distance x over 2 from the edge, from the left-hand side, and from, and from the right-hand side. Then in terms of, uh, let's see, in terms of other forces, well, when I cut this beam, I reveal certain internal forces, and those will be a shear and moment. And uh, so I'll have a some sort of shear, which I don't really care about for this analysis, and MP. And I'm using MP because this is the uh, moment on the real system. MP again, remember P refers to our real system. Now, the reason I'm doing it like this instead of just cutting at a certain point is that, uh, yes, I could fairly easily calculate, say, like one foot from the right-hand side or something, but I don't, for, for this integral, I don't need the moment at a single point. I needed the moment at all points. I need moment as a function of x. And so that's why I'm making this cut in a way that everything is in terms of x. And so now I can derive an expression for my moment for my real system in terms of x. So I can just do a summation of moments. A uh, summation of moments here. Let's do a summation of moments about x. Um, so in other words, I'm taking moments about this point here. And by doing so, I won't need to worry about any moment caused by uh, the shear force, which makes things nice because I don't have to then I don't have to calculate that, which is good. Because I am, if anything, incredibly lazy. So uh, we have MP, uh, our moment, MP. And I'm going to make that a, make it clear that's a function of x. Then in the clockwise direction, I'll just have then in the clockwise direction, I'll have the moment caused by the distributed point load. And that's going to be, let's see, minus Wx times a moment arm length of x over 2. Or in other words, MP is just equal to Wx squared over 2. Okay? So we now have our MP. And of course, we have our delta P, we have our Q, we have our E and our I. Well, we're just leaving them in terms of EI for this calculation. So next, what I want to do is I want to look at the uh, virtual system and derive a moment expression for that one. So I'm going to leave uh, the virtual system here. Okay, so next I want to cut out this sec. I want to isolate this cut section here and do the same kind of moment balance to find the moment as a function of x for m cubed, for basically the moment as a function of x for our virtual system. So let's go ahead and do that, cut that section out. And let's see here. So again, now we're going to cut out uh, this section here at x and see what kind of internal forces are revealed. So uh, I, don't, I don't have any distributed loads, so the only load on this is going to be my one kip load. And this thing is going to be x units in length. And then the internal forces, just like previously, we had a shear and a moment. So we have some sort of shear, which again, we're not caring about for this analysis. And then um, some sort of uh, MQ an MQ here. And if I do a summation of moments about point X, which would be this point right here, if I do a summation of moments about X, I will have MQ minus one kip times X. Or simply MQ is equal to one kip times X, or just X. Okay. So we now have our MQ and our MP. And again, so we could write this as MQ as a function of X is simply equal to X. So again, we now have our uh, 
real moment function and our virtual moment function, and we can combine we can combine these together to calculate our uh, to apply our virtual work equation. So I'm going to rewrite this over here, so I can then uh, have some room to write over there. So mq again is just going to be equal to x. So not too bad so far. Right, so we have this. Now we just have to apply our integral. So um, there's not going to be any summation on this problem because we have just one element. And more importantly, even though we have just one beam, uh, there are no discontinuities within the beam. So if there are, if there's a point load within the beam, then we need to consider a couple other things. But uh, for now, um, we will look at, I just wanted to look at a system with no discontinuities. And so because of that, and because we're only looking at just one beam and not a frame, we don't have any kind of uh, uh, summation to worry about. So our integral then, so that summation drops away and for everything on this side of the equation, we just have the integral from x equals 0 to x equals L of, uh, and I'm going to pull out the 1 over EI. Just put that out front because those are constants, uh, at least for this beam. Now, if you had a, uh, a t now, I guess you could have this, uh, I suppose if you wanted to, that it would be kind of interesting. You could have a tapered beam, like a beam where its cross section actually changed along its length. And in that case, you wouldn't be able to pull out the I as the uh, cr cross section actually changing as a function of X, but we're not worrying about such things today. So uh, MP, again, MP, MQ, DX, and that's it. So. Let's go ahead and get this then, substituting in our MQ and MP expressions. So we have, uh, let's see, WX squared over two and uh, X then, and all of this integrated with respect to X. So uh, again, let's see, we'll have that same one over EI times the integral of W uh, x cubed uh, over 2 from x equals 0 to x equals L, W x cubed over 2, and integrated with respect to dx. Um, or if I take that poly simple polynomial integral, that will be 1 over EI uh, times just, uh, that will be W x to the fourth over 8. and then evaluated from uh, 0 to L. And since the 0 term simply drops away, because it's, you know, it's the top bound minus bottom bound, um, there are no constants in here. So this is just, uh, so this is just uh, a substitution for L. So that will then come to uh, 1 over EI, uh, 1 over EI uh, times WL to the fourth over 8. So now we have everything that is in this integral. So we can apply our equation, our uh, our basic equa our, fun our fundamental equation here, which is that uh, again our q delta p is equal to the summation of the integrals of x equals zero to x equals l m q m p dx over e i or our Q is just a one kip virtual load times delta P, which is what we're after, uh, is equal to this now, one over EI or WL to the fourth uh, over eight EI, or simply the, the one kip will cancel out because I technically had a one kip uh, load in there um, in our moment function. And the delta P then 
is simply going to be equal to WL to the fourth over 8EI. WL to the fourth over 8EI, and of course that would be downward because we defined downward as positive in that particular problem. Okay, so the integration for this one wasn't too bad, It was, a, and this was a fairly simple system again. I chose this because it has no discontinuities, although when you do have discontinuities, uh, things do get a little bit more complicated uh, fairly quickly. Okay, so reviewing what we did here. Well, we created a real system, or we had a real system, and we found the moment function that was uh, present in that actual beam, and, and we find that function just using tools from elementary statics. Then, uh, and, and that function is our MP. Then we have a virtual system that we're applying a, uh, a unit load, for example, a one kip unit load, uh, at the location where the deflection is, is desired. And so we were looking for the deflection at x equals L, at the far end of the beam, or I guess x equals zero in our coordinate system. And so we did that, we applied a unit load and um, defined a virtual system that way. Then once you have a virtual system, you can, you can go do a uh, moment analysis, uh, a simple static analysis to find your uh, moment function for your virtual system. And as long as you did both, made, drove both of those expressions using a consistent uh, coordinate system, you can simply combine those integrals together. And uh, the summation on the integral, again, refers to if you have multiple zones of integration across different uh, discontinuities of a beam, or if you have multiple beams, multiple elements, etc., that are all being deformed by the same uh, point load. Okay, any questions on this? Uh -huh. Oh, okay, so the question is, why was I able to drop the summation from this expression? Okay, let's just, uh, let me illustrate that. And I'll show you why the summation exists. The question is, could we just go over uh, go over again the summation, why we were able to drop that, etc. And certainly. Okay, so uh, let's consider when you need to apply the summation. The key thing to keep in mind is that we are applying an integral. We are applying an integral of these moment functions. And so think for a moment if you had a, a beam with, for example, a discontinuity. For example, this simply supported beam with a point load in the middle. Well, our, uh, our shear function will do something like this. It'll uh, pop up at the start, be constant, then drop down, be constant, then pop back up. The shear function has a discontinuity in it, but in turn, the moment function also has a discontinuity in it. The moment function goes like this. So I cannot define one single function that will, that will work for my moment all the way from x equals zero to x equals L. It simply won't. Um, there's a discontinuity there, and so because of that, I need to use a summation. In other words, I'm gonna do, I would do one integral in this region and a different integral in this region. And I would simply, and because these are scale, because this is all about energy, the nice thing about this being a energy method, it, uh, for the method of virtual work, is that you can simply sum up the uh, quantities involved. Um, energy is energy is energy. And so I can, I can find the energy required in this integral, in this region, uh, to the left of the discontinuity, which is to the left of the, of the discontinuity, our point load, and uh, I simply add that result, that resulting energy, to the energy required to the uh, to uh, deform everything to the right of the discontinuity. So that summation serves to sum up different portions of a beam that have different discontinuities in their uh, moment functions, and we'll look a bit more at that uh, on Wednesday. Also, another source of this 
is that these same principles can be applied to frameworks, not just beams. So if you have a framework, or just a simple frame, for example, and let's say you apply a point load, or you apply a load to it. Well, it's going, it might deform something like this. something kind of like that. And uh, although I probably should elaborate on that, but uh, uh, something like that. But it's going to deform. But the key thing is that this uh, is not simply one element deforming. When this, uh, when this uh, load, this real load moves through a certain distance, it's going to deform the beam, this column, and this column. All of them are being uh, uh, deformed together. And so the, the work that that real force moves through, through its displacement, is going to be equal to the summation of the energies in all the, def the deformation energies in all of the members that it's deforming. So we need to sum them, we need to combine the energy from this one, this one, and this one. And that's another case where that summation uh, works out. So um, basically there's two, two cases where you need to use the summation. One is where you have discontinuities within a single element, and the other is where you're applying virtual work to a series of elements that are, uh, that are coupled together. Does that answer that question? Okay, perfect. Okay, um, finally, I'd like to give some caveats to this as we're wrapping up here. Just a couple caveats of the assumptions baked into this equation. So you may recall that uh, when I did those three body diagrams, I, I just dismissed the shear um, out of hand. And I assumed that, uh, you know, I just said that wasn't important for our analysis. And the reason for that is that this equation uh, assumes that the, the energy changes from shear are small. Uh, the strain energy from shear is small. Uh, in relation to uh, moment. In other words, it assumes moment dominates the energy equation. So if you have a system that has, that is, uh, for example, if you had very, uh, if you had very short beams, if you have a system with very short beams, then with very short beams, your uh, shear will tend to control more than your moment. But for long beams, for most beams we deal with, and for everything we're going to deal with in this class, uh, your, uh, the, the energy required to, to undergo, uh, the energy required uh, for moment, uh, for the deformation of moment, is much, much, much greater than the energy required for normal axis uh, shear forces. But, uh, so that, but there are some systems, such as like uh, uh, not very deep beams, very short beams, et cetera, certain beams, certain materials, um, so certain things like uh, certain mass timber systems, et cetera, where this is not applicable to. So um, this does assume that shear is a minor part of the equation uh, in terms of the overall energy balance which is fine for this course. And again, everything in this course, this will apply to, but it is something you should be aware of uh, if you're using this in design. Okay, uh, any questions before we wrap up for the day? All right, that'll do it for today. Hopefully you found this video a little bit informative or perhaps even a bit enjoyable if you are a glutton for uh, punishment or a glutton for uh, Oh, tedious mathematics. Although this one actually is nowhere near as bad as our uh, previous, uh, some of our previous derivations of um, beam deflection by four layers of integration. Anyway, uh, so hopefully you found this uh, at least a bit informative, uh, perhaps a bit educational, etc. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you have any um, uh, any other thoughts or comments, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to make the good old YouTube robots happy. Um, regardless, in the next lecture, we'll be looking at, uh, we'll be continuing our look at uh, applying methods of virtual work and energy, uh, and including looking at how we can uh, handle beams that have uh, a series of discontinuities within them, and how we can properly apply that summation that we had talked about previously. 
All right, again, that'll do it for today. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe to make the good old YouTube robots, robots happy. Um, regardless, look forward to seeing y'all again soon in the next lecture. Look forward to seeing y'all then. And as always, thank you.